get off the freaking net. And welcome to the Blazon Nation, where the World Wide Web and Real Life World collide and brings current events to you and takes it all into debate. With your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. And welcome back to Blazon Nation after, I believe, a couple of months of a hiatus because I've been busy so much with school stuff and other endeavors of mine. But this is Blazon Nation episode 14, recorded on May 24th, 2014. And guess who's with me today? He's in the other um, picture frame. Guess what his name is. If you need a hint, it's kind of the stream title. If you're watching this stream, which I doubt you are. Because <laughs> you're just cruel that way. Anyhow, introduce yourself, thing. Alright, well, uh, I've been, um, well, first of all, you can just call me Joe for short. Or Joey, my coworkers call me Lil Rue. I don't know why that is, but anyway, Lil I'm a person Rue. who started off um, as a person like all of you listening, and I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is a form of autism, and I've regretted every decision I've made because I knew I had it. I regretted it, but now years have passed, and I finally channeled my passions into that and accepting my disorder. So anyway, basically I'm a person who is full-time. I work at a private company as an investigator and one of my hobbies is playing a lot of Steam games and if you can look for my profile, it has a lot of Steam games on there. Um, I, have, I have over 1,700 and I consider myself as a collector. My passion is music and I like to talk with people and help them solve their computer problems. Although I don't work in a call center, I kind of wish I did, but maybe not. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. And I like to talk about things, give my own opinion. Uh, you probably saw some previous podcasts I was on um, that, like, that was a few to several months ago. So, life's been going, and I have to say that every second that I live right now, even doing this podcast, is a really wonderful and stellar pleasure. You're, it, that, that's just so touching. That it's a stellar pleasure. Thank <laughs> you know, so just... much for those words. <laughs> you make me feel better. I am a um, person as well who has... Tourette's, since we're going the way of describing our disorders. Sometimes I felt like I wish I didn't have it, but I've just put up with it. And one of the... Um, actually, I'm not going to go there. Um, that That's a different story um, from a person who runs scripts that I moderate. Anyhow, and um, yeah... So I've been running this podcast called Blaze on Nation. Um, it's currently been on hiatus because of school. And actually, before I get into any of that, let's talk about sidewalks. No, not really. Not really. Um, that That's just what it's... It's metaphorically speaking. Anyhow, sidewalk talk. Talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk. Yeah. How's that for a bumper? <laughs> that was kind of quiet, actually. Oh, it, it's sidewalk dog. Si t talk where we aren't actually on a sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> a anyhow, if you watch shows like The Shaft, which I've talked about a crap lot on this show... Um, they have a thing called Journeys, which is about our past week. Although, thing if you like, feel free to talk about your past two months, because that's how long it's been since the last place on Nation. Alright, um, I got a recap here. So, um, there are a lot of cool stuff that happened in April. I, at my job, I'm the kind of person who finds bad people 
and who are applying in the healthcare business and I found two bad people in a span of one week so I was very happy my boss was very happy people were really happy in the place I was working at um, we also uh, hired a lot of new people at my job there were two people who were working on the background check side and they got hired as two more people um, got hired there as well and two more got hired in my section so I I work in one section called it uh, it's confidential I'm just gonna say sanction screening and then the other side they do background checks for people who were applying for a job um, uh, what else I'm, I'm, it's really hard to talk about all the things that I that I went through um, I only is, remember is stuff it all confidential too well I would say it is. I don't want to say it in this podcast. I mean, if you want to, like, look, like, talk about what my job is, then you can just contact me on Steam or by my work email. So, anyway, uh, I think the only things that I really can talk about are the game stuff. So, in April, I got Dark Souls 2, and that game is really, really hard. But... <laughs> I yeah, have to I've persist. Heard my stories about it. Yeah, I must have died at least 130 times, and the last time I checked the world death counter, um, there were I have no I'm not I'm not sure if this is true, but I saw over um, 190 million deaths, maybe. So wow, I'm not sure if that number is accurate, but that's a lot. Maybe um, it's not accurate. Maybe they're just lying. It probably isn't. No, <laughs> it, it keeps on updating anyway. So, uh, another thing, I pre-ordered Watch Dogs for the PS3 because PC can't run for crap. My processor is not up to date, and I don't have 2 gigabytes of video RAM for my graphics card, so I'm probably going to buy a new PC before I play Watch Dogs. And other than that, I think there's not really all that much to talk about. Um, I do have another suggestion for the articles that we're gonna uh, put up with, but other than that, I think I think that's that's pretty much it of what's been going on with the past uh, few months. All right, so I guess I'll get to my turn now. Um, basically, like I said before, I've been busy with a lot of stuff, school, trying to get my math grade back up, because I've had some difficulty in that subject. Um, we've been reading the book called The Road by Cormac McCarthy in my English class, so we've been doing stuff with that. Um, and then, what other classes? Oh yeah, physics and transport tech. Pr pretty much j just keeping up with everything and being scared of my Gmail, which is over... 300 emails still. Most mostly, I believe, code project emails, which are news ones, and then slash dot, which are news ones. Which I actually, I think I have a couple in here, or one, one, and yeah, one or two that are from um, slash dot. And I'll get into those later. And then also dealing with my Blazy Log series, which is for. Um, it's Minecraft vlogging, is what it's about. And um, I do it every other day, and yeah, I just talk about things that have been going on lately. But anyhow. That's enough about me. Now, let's go to these topics, which, from the looks of it in the dog, the thing just added a new one, which seems family familiar. Anyway. Brace yourselves, it's the rundown. Alright, so on the rundown, we have Pretty Boy, that's what I nickname him. He thinks we need a special phone to prevent distracted driving, which if you do not know what distracted driving is, it is driving 
of course, simply distracted, whether you're eating food or playing on your phone, etc. Basically, you're not paying 100% attention to your driving. The next article is the smart gun seller in... I forgot where he is in the US, but he got some negative attention online because he is selling smart guns at his store and yeah and then third is Surfadora ha was hacked earlier this month about how many weeks ago about about three two to three weeks ago by Fumesy and we'll get into that later and this video is his first um, thing to say that he was in fact hacked and thanks to Drama Alert which they had Keemstar which is their host um, interview Surfador and his father on the issue although currently he is restoring his channel. The fourth one is a college professor has been fired for a Google Plus post of his daughter wearing a Game of Thrones t-shirt. And then the last two, which are from Thang, is California. Actually, you can explain these two. Well, just give a quick brief on what they yeah, so. Um, so the one where uh, the second to last article talks about that eBay was hacked uh, earlier in it was I was here to say uh, February March or March April and up, up to 145 million accounts were compromised um, they haven't confirmed that's that's just what they're saying just eBay so not PayPal and then the last one is very, very new. Apparently, there was a person named Elliot Roger who is suspected of shooting seven people dead and shooting seven people wounded near the University of California, called California at Santa Barbara. Which is the one that seems more familiar to me, but I did not know there were 14 total casualties. Well, it, it's not a casualty. I said seven were wounded. You but said seven I, dead I, and seven wounded. Yeah. So there, no, a casualty is when, I think. I know what a casualty is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, moving on. Alright, so I'll play the next bumper then. Which is... Digging down. Let's get to the details, shall we? Alright, so the details. Um... With the first article, all right. So Kevin Purdy, who writes articles for IT World, that or it's It World, he believes that we need phones that help us stop killing each other while we are distracted. And buddy disconnected from. The I'll just get the general part. Well, what what he says as a tagline here is. Modern, darn it, Chrome. Modern smartphones should do more to reduce phone while driving accidents and deaths. And I, I'm just going for the general part of this. And my question is, why do we need more hands-free things or systems in a vehicle? Why do we need more than that to stop people or prevent people from being so darn distracted from all their items, whether it's a phone or whatever? Do you have any comments, Thing? Well, my opinion is that we all know that texting and driving is a big deal and people have been trying to crack down on a lot of people who are texting while driving but I think this article is ironic because the thing that is actually getting people killed 
is now trying to save people from getting killed in car accidents. I mean, it's kind of a weird, like, twist, because I know for a fact that I drive, I'm 22, I pay attention to the road, I don't multitask. I mean, I can listen to the radio and drive, but other than that, I just, I don't understand why this has to be, like, put into effect, because we all know that texting while driving is a bad habit, and some of us who have been doing it for so long have the tendency to not stop while doing it. And I even heard in similar states, uh, some states, that you can actually get pulled over just by having your phone out while you're at a stop sign or a stop light. I don't know if that's confirmed. I just heard about it. But anyway, personally, I don't need a phone that will prevent any accidents from happening while I'm driving because I don't get distracted because I don't use my phone. But... Um, to put it in conclusion, on the article it says, we pass laws, then we keep texting. Like I said, people are not always going to follow the law, and despite all of these bans, I think old habits are probably going to take over, and people are going to realize that they are not following the law because they probably grew up texting while driving for so many years and it's going to be hard for them to stop. True. Yeah, where I live, they actually um, bumped up because we originally had about 150 or 60 being the fine for um, distracted driving, which they recently bumped up to about $270 being the fine. And... As for being pulled over or whatever and having your phone out in your vehicle, that yeah. I find is pretty nonsensical. If you're stopped, then you're not really, you're, you're not driving, so I don't see where the distracted is coming in, unless maybe well. you're supposed to watch the stoplight the whole time. Then again, myself, I just would keep, basically, I'd roll my eye up to see it or whatever. Then again, let alone I wouldn't even touch my phone while in a car. I've only got my G1, too, so. To look at another angle, I think that you actually are driving a car despite you stopping at the stoplight or stop sign because the car is on... The seatbelt's on or off if you want to get pulled over even faster, and it's in, shifted into drive. So that's just thinking it from a more in-depth perspective. You still are driving a car despite you not going anywhere because it's turned on, every, the engine's running, and such as. Very true. But I suppose more so, I'll put it this way, just, just being pulled over, complete stop, and so, so, like, is this just if your vehicle is just even parked or whatever? Or is it that if they can hear your engine going, you're in trouble? Well, you see, if you're in a parking lot, I hardly doubt that that you know, authorities will pull you over because you're looking at your phone in a parking lot. But if you're on a busy street, if you're stopped even on, on the highway, well, that only probably happens if you have an emergency. But it, it just doesn't make sense to pull you over in a parking lot because you're, you're perfectly fine there. But, I mean, like I said, if you're not in a parking lot and you're driving and you're making a turn up at the, at the stop sign and you have your phone out. Technically, you are driving a car, but I guess, and from speaking from the other side, I guess it is kind of dumb to be pulled over because you are, you are stopped due to busy traffic or because there's some sort of an accident and you can't, and you can't move that much. All right. You ready for the next one? Yep. All right, let's get to it. Now, to the next topic. And for those wondering, that little background there, that's not fuzz. 
I put it there on purpose. But this <laughs> next topic is about that smart gun seller. And so the whole debate going on here is more simply um, between legislating or more so basically just forcing it upon everyone to have a smart gun and making it a choice to the people as to whether they want one or not. And New Jersey in the U.S. Do you live there? I don't live in New Jersey, but I used to live there. Ah, okay. Because, yeah, because they have apparently had a, um... Darn it. Lost my train of thought. Okay, so they... They have apparently had a gun law saying that basically as soon as smart gun technology is available that um, if you want a gun you are to get a smart gun and now that there's a smart gun out there um, the fire has been lit to the debate and for me, I, I'm i personally against smart guns because they're being, they're, they're supposedly locked even more than they already are or should be by a computer system, which everyone knows, at least uh, certain people already know that computers can easily be hacked. And that, that's why there's all these hackings and hacktivists. That's what I was thinking. There. Hacktivists? Or hack no, I said, no, I said that's, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking the same thing you were, because computers can be hacked. Yeah, and th they can even be broken. And s what, what if this computerized lock fails? then the smart gun is no longer dysfunctional and it can be used and the reason why we have non smart guns as annoying as the term sounds in my mind these aren't operated by a computer they are just made of metal or whatever and it's been proven to be secure and to force smart guns upon everybody not, not to mention in the first place that also violates the second amendment which one of the articles I used to have in the show notes was about a um, SCOTUS justice who um, made a thing about a rewritten version of the Second Amendment, which makes it completely the opposite of what it was intended to be, which was to make guns available for the people and not just police and the authority. What, what are your thoughts on this? Well, like you said, it's the whole Second Amendment thing. I mean... The fact that computers can easily be hacked definitely means that there is a dangerous situation with these types of smart guns. Because if you think about it, um, I'm not sure exactly how the technology is implemented for the bracelet that comes with the smart gun. I, th that's another thing. I, I don't know how this stuff works. I don't know. So, anyway, I mean, it's it's. I would say it's definitely... Uh, possible to hack a smart gun and I don't think that the smart guns are are the future of the firearm because one somebody can easily like if you're if you're be hypothetical there could be somebody walking around w with a gun and the bracelet and the gun could just magically go off depending on how close it is to the bracelet I mean, think about it. If the gun's off and you, like you don't have it activated, and then it just turns on, and then bam, it's like the gun goes off without you knowing. But since you're the only one who's there, 
at the time, people are going to think that you did it and not the person who hacked it. It's it's a hypothetical thing. And now I'm hearing about the fingerprint scanner. Obviously, that's not going to work because somebody can copy your fingerprints off of surfaces and apply it to some sort of uh, like surface and then unlock the gun. I, it's it's hard it's hard to think about it, but you know I've I've been to the range. I've fired a Luger, I've fired a Sig and a Glock. I've also fired a semi-automatic and an M1 Garand with my dad and my brother at the at a shooting range, and it was a lot of fun. But this whole smart gun technology thing just it's so hard to think about because you have to think about the positives to it and the negatives to it, and if the positives outweigh the negatives, then that's a good thing. But you need to take special um, extracurricular measures in order to prevent any accidents that could happen with these w- with these guns. So, yeah, I'm just I'm just reading something by one of my friends. Yeah, he says I... make sh- make sure. That there are safety locks on the smart gun so it can't go off randomly. But you never know because somebody can it's not it's let's say the smart gun definitely has like not a hundred percent hackable design. That's what I'm going with. Hmm. And we all know that it's the person who fired the gun, not the gun itself. A lot of people tend to believe that, like lots of other things, can cause gun violence, like video games, which I totally disagree with. So that's all I got to say. Jack Thompson for you. (laughs) Jack Thompson, crazy, (laughs) trying to promote Grand Theft Auto 4 as a murder simulator. Are you kidding? That's horrible. Uh, I'm surprised. um, have you heard of Gingcast? I have no idea what that is. They, they are um, they, they're, they mostly do Minecraft Let's Plays, but they've done montages on Grand Theft Auto V. They, they make the dang game look so freaking innocent. Like, polite thievery or whatever it was. Polite bur- burglary? That they... One of them has a gun on the shopkeeper and the other person um, is giving him compliments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm watching one right now. It's one of the best things ever. But... If, if, you, if you look at all these shootings that have gone on, which is actually one of our topics, which Thing mentioned, none of these, they, they might have something to do with the game, they definitely have something to do with the gun, but that's never the source of it. It's always something going on in the mind. Yeah, it's just, the only thing that video games can provoke in some people is aggression and I think that's what actually leads to the the other things like like pre like premeditation of murder and and such as but I don't see video games that way because my parents taught me so well about the differences between what reality is and what virtual reality is and I can definitely confirm that you know these video games they don't do they don't provoke me to cause any real life violence and that, that's the thing with me, you can give me a game with as much gore as possible in it, like Dead Space or what have you, and... Carmageddon? I haven't played one. that yet, but... Yeah, it's, it's really, it's really it, violent. You, you, you can go as violent or bloody as you want with me. I'm not going to get disturbed at all by it, and that's probably because... It's computer animation. I know it's not real. And that's the thing is these people who've done shootings that it's apparently inspired. They apparently inspired their actions by what they did in a video game. It's a simple thing of they don't know how to separate reality from the video game. In Call of Duty, you don't respawn. 
and、yeah. people you kill don't respawn. You kill anyone or even yourself in real life, you're gone for good. You're, you're not respawning at all. Nope. And the thing is that some people, there are some people out there who do have that mentality and they aren't frequently properly disciplined to understand that difference. And that's kind of where our mental health issue applies to the United States, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, now, just. Oh. Yeah. No, go ahead. I'm、oh. just reading something. Oh, I, I was going to get to the next topic.、Oh, All right, so basic chat. Oh, it isn't. Oh, no. Not in chat. Okay, so to conclude, my, my thing is the smart gun is it's a nice idea, but I don't think it will hold up 100%, and there will be problems with it. So it's、oh, not the future、sure. of the firearm. People will be acting like James Bond everywhere. And、mm. when they least expect it, they're going to hurt somebody. And, and I, when you said hypothetical, I was so expecting, I was so hoping you might say hypocritical. Because this one incident that happened in a school, which of course a regular gun, a kid at, had an accidental fire. And with smart guns, since we, we don't, some of us, we don't know what we're getting into with this newer technology, and let alone that it'll even work and function properly, it, it's kind of hypocritical, because especially if you got that bracelet there, like you said, which I personally didn't really know too much about. Is that, that that's going to make it easier to have an accidental fire, which is what is one of the things it's supposed to prevent. Yeah. But in turn, it does the complete opposite and doesn't prevent anything. But anyway, let's go to. Now to the next topic. Okay, I should probably come up with something more original for each part. <laughs> it's alright. Just so that it's not now to the next topic. Now to the next topic and so on. On to the so next、forth. section. I don't know. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So, like I said earlier during the rundown, Sir Fedora, who you might know as the one like kid. In which he posted on a video on his YouTube channel, which is now youtube.com slash surfedora. And he asked for one like, and basically he'd go through the roof. Next video. He is freaking ecstatic. And he even proves that he went through the roof by showing a crack in. A ceiling in the room that is dad, well, a hole in the ceiling that is dad or whoever hadn't fixed yet. And he was, he didn't even have caffeine to be this excited, but he was just excited about this one like. And then after that video, things went through the roof, he got over a million views. And his channel just blew up, and he's got over 130,000 subscribers. Until earlier this month, when some jerk, who at first we didn't know who the heck he was, hacked his YouTube and Twitter account. And on his Twitter account, he, this hacker was just flooding other people that. Were on Surfador's Twitter begging for a game or key or whatever, and was re uploading videos of Surfadora with j- just all sorts of crap. And one of the videos mentioned two channels, vi- Viral, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. I'll go with viral design because that's what I've heard it sound like. That's right. And Fumesy, who 
were the alleged hackers because they were linked in this video that said if you follow these guys you're gonna get to win some cool stuff although later viral DZ viral design was able to clear his name in a YouTube video that showed the whole Skype chat User left your which channel. was viral saying well viral typing out that he had to go study up some stuff and then it was just Fumzy and Surfadora talking and this was about having them being shout shouted out so I'm not exactly sure if that video that was linking to them two was fake or not because there was that Skype chat and it, it was before any of this other crap had gone on although it was definitely suspicious but and next thing we know it was Fumesy there was way more evidence against him not to mention on his Twitter um, I was about to say you can find it on the Dead Workers Party news site but they replaced that with their YouTube videos and on his Twitter he basically was being jolly about it and when Viral Design tweeted him that um, you got yourself into this crap he said yeah, welcome to hell, man. Welcome to hell. And he put it in a jolly way. Well, narcissistic way? Is that the word for it? I think so. Okay, I'll go with that. Um, don't sue me if I got the wrong definition there. And... So from there, another video had come up with Steam Plays FTW's YouTube channel and everything with another contest. Actually, no. No, it wasn't a contest. It was if he doesn't get this many followers or subscribers, Surfador was going to quit YouTube. And then that's where the stuff came in with that he must be one of the hackers too or the hacker and I even got my suspicions up but except for with Steam Plays FTW there's nothing against him although he's gotten a lot of hate and I also haven't seen a video from him correct me if I'm wrong that he did get a video out there that he basically proof that he didn't do it either that it was just Fumzy which it was and it, it, it just drove me nuts when I found out about it I, I forget exactly when this was I, th I think it was um, probably about the 6th or no 7th or 8th or so and I was just so peeved off. This kid, he... I, I don't even call him a kid. Because he has just so much passion for making YouTube videos, for making vlogs and everything. And he's... And, and how he got famous more so was someone posted his second video on reddit and it blew up from there and there's so been so many haters saying that oh he's using his fame to be greedy or they're making fun of his size and everything and that that peeves me off enough but to t to ruin his stream like that that just put me over and He's done nothing wrong, he's been doing his own thing, he's been keeping quite a fair consistency at what he's done, he's been honest, everything about him is just awesome. And 
I myself, I've never been jealous of him. I don't have much YouTube fame myself, although I do desire it. I will not deny that. You have a YouTube, right? The thing? Yep. Do you have much publicity on there? No, not really. I mean, I only have about, like, uh, hold on. I'm, I'm slacking. <laughs> I have to look up my channel. I'm a freaking moron. Yeah, I don't have that much up. I only have, I only have 117 subscribers with That's over more six. Than I have. Okay, well, I'm kind of going up the rungs of the ladder a little bit. I'm at 66,000 views. That's only because of the Bioshock moments that came out, and the videos, the views seem to increase when Bioshock 2 came out. So, I have, I don't know how many uploads I have, but. Uh, I have over. I have about a hundred twenty around now. I have one hundred thirty-eight videos, so that's you're, that's it. You really are higher than me. What what's your most viewed video count? Well, um, uh, I'm still not used to this freaking channel thing. <laughs> I I'm trying to find it, and I've had my account since April two thousand six, and. YouTube oh, has changed so much. So you've like, had years since pretty well the beginning. Yeah, um, I think YouTube was created in 2000, I want to say 2005 maybe? Yeah, yeah, 2005. Okay. And then the next year it was bought by Google. Okay, so, so let me see. I'm trying to find the most... Huh, so actually the most views... I have right now is on my there's a video I upload called My Bloody Valentine Killing Floor Parody and that seems to have the most amount of views on it uh, I, I guess <laughs> how many views well um, I'm still trying to figure out how this works <laughs> My well, most viewed one is Pottermore Letters from School with over 4,200 views. Yeah, I, I need and to I only see... I have 43 subscribers. Okay, so so that video that mentioned that I won has seven, over 78,000 views, and there was a huge spike in January 2012, and the video got 871 views on that one day. Crap. Which is kind of insane. There's just this huge spike that just went all the way up. Alright. But anyhow, back to those thing. And the, the whole time I've been just proud for the... just proud for Sir Fedora with his achievement. And... when I first watched him singing Wrecking Ball, that there's a spark to him. Usually, I'm just thinking, I don't want to hear some tone-deaf person singing a song I don't like at all. But, Surfadora has a spark to him. With that, he just enjoys it so much, and let alone, he's, he's famous. He is famous. Which, honestly, is another reason why I got into his stuff in the first place, I will not lie. But, fortunately, drama alert, Keemstar, he was able to contact Sir Fedora and his father for an interview and get the stuff put out to everyone, and God bless you, Kim Keemstar. Sorry that I nearly butchered your name there. Yeah, I'm glad that they were able to sort everything out for him because I mean that's a shame just he was doing something that he wanted to do he loved doing it and, and it, it's like that I don't know if you've seen South Park but there's this one called episode called you have zero friends basically it's about this this one little kid who has no Facebook friends and as soon as he gets one friend he gets all happy and then as soon as you know, Stan doesn't become the person who has the most friends. 
he now gets the most friends and he's happier than ever. So that's what it reminded me of. I'm glad they got it sorted out. I'm happy for, for Sir Fedora and I hope he makes more entertaining videos in the future. Oh, I do too. I, I look forward every day to something new from his channel and I'm I'm honored to be followed by him on Twitter even which cuz he was on an episode of the shaft as a guest friend episode and I I did up a bumper for it which unfortunately was not played but I made a question up and some fan art for the shaft featuring him and I just find it despicable that someone would do that to him. Oh, yeah. And I I just hope it doesn't happen to anyone else. I would never wish such a thing upon every upon anyone. And... But anyways, in terms of getting his channel back up, he did post a post a new video, which he's gotten rid of the Imperial Knight stuff, which I am pretty darn sure they were the ones to hack it away from Fumzy, because there was a Twitter post by Sir Fedora that, well, him or and or his father, that. The YouTube account was hacked away from Fumzy by someone else, which seems to be Imperial Knights because they had posted a couple of their music videos and put up their own art and put their name in. And and if and looking at their Twitter, they seem pretty big. And I. I I don't know where they'd be coming from that they'd hack him since they're a music group or something or other that have nothing to do with him or anything why they'd be doing that but fortunately he is currently working with YouTube to get all his videos returned to YouTube and I hope to see everything back to normal again which I think this is now good timing to say the following now to the next topic and I still apologize for the repeat of that I should make something more enthusiastic <laughs> It, that that's just gonna drive me nuts for the whole episode. I'm not sure whether I should keep on playing that bumper or not. I it just so sounds so freaking flat. But anyhow, to this next article, which is from CNET, and these are all in the show notes. And so what's gone on here is a college professor. He made a Google Plus post, which, for those who don't know what Google Plus is, is it's Google's approach to Facebook, which obviously isn't that popular. Or maybe not so much of obviously, but it for sure is not as popular as Facebook. And he made a Google Plus post featuring a photo of his young daughter who seems about eight or nine or so and she is wearing a Game of Thrones t-shirt if the web page will load up here I can... oh here it is so what the quote is and this is from Game of Thrones again I will take what is mine with, fle with fire and blood and some doof some person at wherever what this was for some reason interpreted 
as a security threat. And he ended up being suspended for that. Oh, and by the way, thing, feel free to button. That way I don't have to keep on saying. Well, I'm security. just waiting for you to get to the topic first, and then you oh. can ask me my opinions. I'm oh. not really talking unless you ask me or something. Oh. Can I talk now about it? what my stance is on it? Yes, go ahead. All right. So, apparently, they overreacted to what was appearing on this kid's shirt because they thought it was a threat. Now, let's go back and look at it from the kid's perspective. The kid doesn't know any better. They're just wearing the shirt because they think it's cool. The person who is responsible for buying that shirt is obviously the professor. If he did, because I have no idea if he did or not, but if he did, then correct me if I'm wrong. So, I haven't watched Game of Thrones, but I definitely know that this probably was... He probably shouldn't have been suspended because I don't see this as a security threat because it's a little kid. He doesn't know any better. And I guess maybe the college professor could have been issued a warning or something along those lines. But I think a suspension is kind of a bit much. Now, I don't know exactly where he took that photo in the first place. It looks like some sort of a of a building where I don't know is it just looks know. like his home to me yeah but I, I don't see I don't see how it's a threat I, I just don't like if it's a quote from a fictional TV show and I understand that sometimes TV shows have an impact on people's minds and how they think because let's be honest movies and media and TV shows do that but in my opinion, I don't think that the college professor should have been suspended just because he posted a picture of his of his kid wearing the shirt. I mean, is it his shirt? Is it the kid's shirt? I can't confirm well, that because I it, don't know. In the article, it says he is also partial to Game of Thrones. But but is it is it his or is it hers? Like I'm did he not buy it exactly for her? Sure either. Yeah, I don't need. I don't know. But so also apparently his daughter is actually seven years old, so I was only about a year off technically, even though I said two numbers. But so there a possible thing that I can think of is the reason why this college professor was suspended for sharing this photo is because maybe people thought that he was raising his kid to be violent and I don't see that. That's probably hypothetical but I'm just putting a scenario out there. Or second he wanted to take a picture of his kid wearing the shirt because he thought that people would would look it would just look adorable and people can share it all over the world wide web but now he's suspended for it so maybe he shouldn't have done that but it kind of happened so I mean I would I would definitely give the professor a warning after doing something like this, but I wouldn't necessarily suspend them, and I would not take it as a security threat whatsoever. Yeah, the way I see it is, in, in the first place, again, Google Plus isn't even popular, so that's one thing. It's his own personal site, I suspect. Unless it's a school's thing or whatever, then I suppose that's a different story. But, and, and let alone the First Amendment, freedom of speech and expression and everything. Can he not post what he wants just as long as it's not inciting hatred or any of that on his own profile? And actually what this also reminds me of and I think I found this on Facebook, was apparently a, a kindergarten teacher or, or a teacher who was teaching a younger grade of school. She was fired from her job because she made a Facebook post calling her students germ bags. 
Now, what we're talking probably K to grade 1 or 2 or so. Which are quite common to eat, not eat their boogers, but have their boogers, boogers all over. Yeah. No offense to you, it's true. I've experienced it myself. Everyone's a germ bag when they're little. They're gonna touch everything, especially the ones that don't wash their hands after taking a whiz or taking a crap. Which, if you're not even that age, if you're teenage or a grown up, and you don't wash your hands after excreting, what the heck is wrong with you? Yeah, that's not that's not uh, sanitary at all. But the thing is, kids don't know better unless they are told by their parents every time to wash their hands. And as soon as they start doing that, it becomes a habit, and they'll end up doing it all the time. Yeah. And e even at school, I'll see other students there at the urinal, and they leave. Which is why I don't trust the door handles worth a darn. And now I I'm don't not... touch door handles. <laughs> I, I you know what I do? I since I wear a sweater all the time and I always like wash it. I use part of the sweater sleeve to turn and open the, open the door. That is pretty much what I do, except for I use the bottom part to open yeah. the door. I I am not I I'm I wouldn't consider myself a to have phobic reactions to bacteria or germs. But if someone's hands have been all over their private areas or all over their butt talks, or for goodness sake, when you're, and I apologize to those who don't want the extra description, but when you're wiping your butt, what if you get poop on your finger? And you just wipe it off. I, I don't want to touch something that you've touched with your once touched by crap or just any kind of yeah. excretion. Yeah, end it, just end it right there. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I refuse to touch something like that. Yeah. And in terms of the shirts, some days I'm tempted to wear a poli political shirt at school. For example, my school is all into the... And I have nothing against the diversity stuff I'm all for it but it makes me tempted to wear this shirt to school I think it's from Zazzle which says celebrate diversity and it's full of silhouettes of fully automatic firearms that is my dream is to go to school wearing that just to see what reactions I get. Yeah. Um, referring back to the article that we're talking about, um, it's kind of weird seeing this passage. So it says, quote, a so-called security official, quote, reportedly wondered whether in using the word fire, Schmidt was actually referring to AK-47. If that shirt is from Game of Thrones and he thinks that it refers to an automatic weapon, you gotta be joking. Yeah, I, I, I'll, now that you mention just, it, I didn't really even get that, but that that's a fantasy thing. You don't get guns in fantasy. Well, maybe you do, but video games are kind of a fantasy, but they're not actual guns. They're, they're pixels. So... I don't see how the word fire would refer to a fully automatic weapon. It makes no sense. Obviously, that security official, quote-unquote, probably hasn't even seen Game of Thrones. And that's why he thought it was a threat. And that's the other thing. You don't know a thing about it till you've tried it. That's yes. what I think about Minecraft haters. You don't know how much you're going to love Minecraft to death. Like I do, or maybe not so much as I do, or even more than I do, until you've 
actually played Minecraft. You don't know a thing about guns till you've tried one. Which apparently both me and Thing have tried a I've, gun. I've had Minecraft since the alpha. So oh, I you have do? a clear idea. Yeah. Uh, ever since it came out I've had it I've had the alpha. You're awesome. Yeah. I've Yeah, at first I first I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I was just wandering around hitting blocks, just placing stuff. I was like, what is the goal here? So as soon as I started watching YouTube videos and tutorials, I'm like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> and and th there's some people that are iffy about Let's Plays, but when you consider what it's done for the industry, yeah, it that that's what gets people into this stuff. Grand Theft Auto 5 has not come out for the PC yet, and I still wait for it. So while I wait, I'm gonna watch Captain Sparkles play it, Toby Turner's single player Let's Play, or Ginge Cast's montages of it. Any of those. And yeah. getting more back on topic here, even if you think video games are a waste of time or dumb or whatever. You don't know until you've played one. True. Um, there actually is a Game of Thrones video game, but I can't really judge it because I haven't actually played it before. But, but from what I heard from other from other people, they didn't say that it was actually a great game. Was it? Telltale? I guess you might as well... Game of Thrones. Yeah, but it, was it by Telltale? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who it was by. Yeah, they're the ones who did The Walking Dead. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I just saw it. It's... It's a... It's a it says... It was developed by Cyanude Studio and published by Focus Home Interactive. So, it was not... It was not made by that company you said earlier. Telltale game. No, Telltale is Walking Dead. That's the first yeah. thing I think of when they make that. That. All right. That's what I that's think all of I gotta it say. too. And to the next topic, which I'll let you explain, because you know more about it than I do. I now to. I believe just to get that word in there. Now to the next topic. All right. So what's the next topic? All right. So the next article is about eBay being hacked earlier in February and March. Up to 145 million accounts were compromised. eBay e eBay uses an, uses a service called PayPal, but they do not believe that PayPal was hacked at the current time. So, like I said, when something like this ha happens, people are concerned and it's definitely wise to change your password because all sorts of personal information on your eBay account could have been compromised and people might know where you actually live. But, like I said, PayPal was not compromised because there was no indication and now several um, companies, including um, the ones in San Jose, California, which they are joining the other states, and they are investigating this hack. And I really hope that they find how this happened. Um, a couple of incidences like this was the heart bleed bug, which happened... Um, was discovered probably I'd say February of this of this year, and it's been around for two years. For good reason knows why there was a hole in the um, SS Open SSL uh, authentication. What do you use and log in using extensions on websites such as Steam, Facebook, Twitter, etc. So I really hope they find uh, the answer. To how they were hacked and in the meantime just change your passwords and I guess that should help. I also read a separate article where somebody actually uploaded a .php file 
and they were able to take control of a page on eBay that wasn't actually the official one. So they were able to just, like, the whole thing is probably still unpatched, and they're still working on it. So it says, the company announced on Wednesday that its database was hacked between late February and early March, allowing cyber attackers access to names, encrypted passwords, email addresses, home addresses, phone numbers, and dates of birth. An eBay spokesperson said that as many as 145 million users may have been affected by the breach, which is higher than the 128 million active marketplace accounts that was reported sometime in 2013. I guess it leads to an article about the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission website. So, like I said, just change your passwords. Make sure that you keep an eye on your PayPal, even though they haven't been affected, and everything should be fine. So, you want to lay in on anything, uh, JBJ? Well, speaking of Heartbleed, that actually reminds me, apparently, and I, I think he is Canadian, apparently a person got arrested for exploiting it. I forget what it was for, though, but... I know someone was arrested for it, and actually, apparently, the NSA, which is notorious for spying on all of the U.S., and I'm pretty sure the U.K. as well, they've also been using it. Well, you said the NSA, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, I've, yeah, I've heard, it hasn't been confirmed, but I've heard that the NSA has been using the heart bleed bug uh, loophole as a way of snooping in on people's information. Yeah. And I guess I guess I guess I can I can believe that, but I haven't ha seen any indication. I haven't seen the NSA coming over to my house. So. <laughs> I just put it to if any I I I'd prefer not to have a spying company spy on me. But my only thing is if they have a problem with what I do, I really don't give a crap. They can pretty much just as well suck it up, because what I'm doing is legal where I am, and if they don't like it, then not my issue. They're the ones not minding their own business. They're the ones in the first place violating my right to privacy. Yeah, well, like like I said, the government's job is job security, and they have to find a way to make it to find a balance so they're not invading too much privacy, and they're not and and, and they're not act they're not passing it over too quickly. And referring <laughs> back to South Park, I'm pretty sure that we've all seen that episode. <laughs> With, uh, I was going to say Ben Affleck, but I might be wrong. There's those little antenna things on their heads that can, like, read each other's thoughts. The, the I'm only, full of references today. I don't the, know why. The, the only thing that I've seen much of from South Park is, They took their jibs! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that is just the best. But back to what so, you were saying... <laughs> yeah, so so that's it. So I I hope they find the whole eBay situation, patch it, make sure it does not happen again, and people can just you know buy more stuff on eBay because that place is a lot is a very good website to buy stuff at cheap prices, also, such as the Xbox One or the PS4. For those of you who are don't have the system yet, I'm probably not going to get one because I have an Xbox 360 Slim and a PS3, so I'll probably get it later. Also, speaking of the eBay thing, thank you for talking about it here, because I need to change my password, <laughs> even though I don't really use eBay much at all, but j just in case. And yeah. finally, well... Next to finally, last but not least, I mean, not last but not least, I'll, I'll, I'll just stick with next to finally. No. 
now to the next topic. All right, so the Elliot Roger crisis. All right, so um, I so say I think it was one to two days ago. So there was a report of a shooting that happened around the, the University of California in Santa Barbara. So. Seven people were shot dead, seven people were wounded, and several drive-by shootings, what it seemed like. The person who, uh, it says six on the article, I don't know why, but it is to believe to be the 22-year-old son of an assistant director on The Hunger Games, known as Elliot Roger. Um, I first saw this in a Steam group chat, and apparently it was the six I, I'm, I'm about to say a seven minute video of his he uploaded some sort of a, of a video like it, it was pretty chilling it was at, I would say a couple to a few hours before he he committed this uh, spree and so did you actually see the video sorry what did, did you actually see the video? I have seen the whole video, and it did really creep me the hell out, because I do believe that uh, authorities said that this video and the events that unfolded actually have a, actually have a, um, a connection. So, um, according to the article... The suspect posted vi a video on YouTube where he rants against women who rejected him and described plans to carry out an attack. And then CNN posted a transcript from the video titled Retribution. So, ah, that's bas where I'm basically, yeah. basically, this guy, despite like him being on the red carpet two years ago with his father, who uh, who directed as an assistant director for the Hunger Games basically could not accept the fact that women just turned him down he can't wasn't accepted by the so-called um, oh, what's that word like sophisticated man I don't know something like that and he basically says he wanted to punish all of the yellow all those blondes and then the S-L-U-T word and that's basically what he talked about so it's very sad I don't know anybody who's in California but my thoughts and prayers are with the person who committed the crime as well as with the victims those who are recovering those who were very affected by the events that unfolded when they were nearby and Hodge's family. <sighs> yeah. It's it's when, uh, it's really sad. When, when I, I, I saw the link to the video, I guess YouTube's YouTube took it down because of terms of service, which yep. I, I I don't disagree with cuz that that's that ended up being a total promise of death to people. It's it's and, just sad. And over a pretty much a hateful thing. That just because he sucks at getting girls, just like me, I suck at getting girls, doesn't mean that they're just aliens or some crap like that. They yeah, just... have their own minds. They're not attracted to everybody, for goodness sake. There's yep. there's even the three sexual orientations. <laughs> um, th this is what I said in a previous chat earlier. I said that just because women won't accept you doesn't mean that they deserve to be punished in any sort of way whatsoever. Everyone has the right to say no, and I have a feeling that this guy didn't get out much. He didn't go out to parties 
or do anything with anybody. He probably never introduced him a lot to strangers and got to know them a little more. I guess he just kind of lived in his own little world and he just couldn't accept rejection. It was like he wanted something so bad to happen that it was it turned into a necessity. And I guess when you can't have a necessity, and we all know that a necessity or when you need something, a need is something that you have to have and you can't live without it. And if he didn't have what he needed, then I guess he made this made this video clearly indicating from my perspective that he just could not live without that. And I really I really hope they the you know, the people who were affected by this like forget this really awful tragedy that happened. But it just happened and we just have to move on. I I really wanted to see the Hunger Games. I never got to watch them, but now that this happened, I think I might actually watch it and appreciate all of the work that Elliot's father helped with on the set. So you originally didn't like it so much, the Hunger Games. Is what you're trying uh, to I'm say. sorry, your, vo your voice is cutting out. So you originally didn't like the Hunger Games. No, I just, I don't, I'm not saying I don't like oh. it. I'm saying that I never got around to it because it oh. was just known to be, like, very popular. And I, I just never got into the Hunger Games. But like I said, now that this happened, I might give the Hunger Games a chance. Well, definitely give it a chance. I saw it and... I'm just thinking, now I know what all this hype about is about, because it, it, it is gripping. It really is, and at the dramatic parts, it, it, it gets to your emotions. I, I, I even in Catching Fire, it, it made me feel like I might just cry. <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. And then you had Philip Seymour Hoffman, you know, pass away due to oh, a yeah, heroin that. overdose. So, oh, that was gives a, that sucks. Awful. Yeah. So, in conclusion, you're not alone in the world. If you have the ability to just go out, meet new people, get new friends, just talk about things, people will listen to you. You know, people have the right to say no and. Oh, that's Usually, what I was going to say. At my old school, they they have this thing called Snowball, which is basically where two people start off dancing, and then after about, I think, 10 or 30 seconds, um, they all have to split to find two other people to dance with, and so on and so forth. And in my grade 8 year... They implemented a new rule where if you are asked to dance, you are not to refuse. Oh, that's actually a pretty stuff. that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, I like I like that idea. You get to dance with 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 different people as you move along the dance floor because that way you get to meet new people and like talk about things and such. You know, who are you? Where are you from? What are your interests? Yeah, that's actually a really, really cool idea. I might pass that idea along for future snowballs at um, that happened at uh, my high school that I went to. Uh, I so, might thanks. be against it, but you're so, welcome. Yeah, and so you're not alone in the world. There are people to talk to. People will listen. You have the right to say no. You can't always have things your way. And to be honest, I think those who are smart sophisticated men they don't they don't think that people deserve to die because they reject you it doesn't make any sense it's it's like you say it's like that one incident where um at a high school there was there was somebody who was being asked to prom and when she said that she had a boyfriend and she said no Oh yeah, I the saw kid just stuff. just stabbed her, and she fell down the stairs. It was messed up. So, 
I really hope that the people who are mentally ill, they find help because there is help everywhere that they can talk. They can talk to other people, even professionals, and I just think that it would be a much better place. But those who have mental issues and they don't have the discipline, they need to be, they need to be taught. They need to take action and take initiative. And, and they that, can always that, have help if they can't. That, that's what I find, and relating it to, relating the stuff to the gun control debate, that there's all the stuff about spending money on banning guns. What it should be put towards is making mental health facilities more available to those who need them. That's what's going to save lives, because it, even um, on the on last year's Canada's Worst Driver, which was Canada's Worst Driver Ever, one of their nominees for the Worst Driver, who goes by Angelina, well, that's her real name, but anyway, Angelina had her own personal problems, which was one of the big reasons why she couldn't drive well, because if she screwed up or whatever, she'd bawl her eyes out so much. And it's because there was a facility around to get her help, which the people at Canada's Worst Driver directed her to, she's able to get that help, which unfortunately she was not able to get where she lived, which is why she um, hadn't had that help was because it was not available where she was. Right. Well, actually, it, it was available, but the waiting list was just bad. It was just long and it, it, it it's just not good. It was it was under abundance. Yes. Like there was enough space. Yeah. But anyway, um I should have a bumper for the um shout outs and um getting out of the um, seriousness of this show. But anyways, so before we end the show, I have uh, about four things to put out there, and then if you want, you can do yours too. Um, FF Split, which I have, which on all my previous episodes, there has been a link to it. Um, I checked their recent version and it still doesn't have quite the capability yet for media files, but as soon as it's added in, I will hopefully be using that for episodes of Blaze on Nation. So go check them out, ffsplit.com. Ender Radio, which you can find at bit.ly slash ender dash radio. That is, well, I'll simplify it. Bitly slash Ender Dash Radio. That's my one of my current projects I've been working on, which is an online radio station for Minecraft music. So stuff like Bebop Boxes, Don't Mind at Night, Odds Josh MC, Jason Nation, or even Eric Fullerton's In Search of Diamonds. You can find it on there somewhere. Just gotta wait for it. And I am currently trying to find some way to get at least 833 or so, so I can renew the plan, so I can get back to working on it more. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you go to bit.ly slash blazemon, that is B L A Z A bit.ly slash B L A Z A M O N or if you're American that's Z. You can buy anything you like, but by using that link you will support the projects and the show that I do in doing so. And if you do, thank you so very darn much. 
And lastly, if you are looking into a community website, go to bit.ly slash blaze engine. That's only one E. I'll have the spelling of it in the show notes. And you can get a free site for, well, actually, no. You, you can get a site with engine, and if you upgrade, it'll help out my projects. And do you have anything to put out? Thing? Oh, um, you all have a wonderful night or day or afternoon or whatever. Thanks for listening, and well, I guess we'll see you guys next time. I might not be on the show, but I will definitely be around if you want. Like I said, Twitter is at the thing 2010 or if you want to contact me on Steam and talk about stuff, you go to the Steam, uh, you s- search the name the underscore thing. I'm also there as well. I have a YouTube channel called uh, SC God or Splinter Cell God. I might think about changing that, but I probably can't. So I upload uh, let's play, let's plays every once in a while on there. Um, I'd like to thank JBJ Blaze for oh. making me stay on this podcast. Well, I'm just I'm being honest. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, I'm just sorry. Like, like I told this lady at church tonight, who I know well, uh, over complimenting. Although I guess you aren't doing much of, but. On the shaft on Thursday night, which you'll see the episode, they overflatter me way too much, and I'm. Uh, I was on my way to crying. In my yeah, opinion, I'm, that is okay. I'm not really an emotional person, but there have been times <laughs> where I did. I I do end up having the waterworks activate, and sometimes it just can't stop. It might be music related because that's one of my passions. It might be thinking about family and 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 at one rare instance was a um, I'm not sure if it was how oh, I gotta look it up. Um, I always get the things mixed up. It's either a visual or a virtual novel that I played on my computer that one time. Get butterfly in your stomach, and that's kind of what happened. And, but that was way back in well, January 2012. I'm a new man. So anyway, that's all I got to say. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And b- before we go, um, name the first movie you ever cried over and the first song you ever laughed at over one of the verses. Oh, you're asking me? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, right, so- I am. Like video or just like movie or what? Feature film. Okay, so this is gonna be tough. So I think I think it has to be um, Charlotte's Web because I still have a VHS tape of the nineteen seventy. I would say seventy nine release of that movie. And when I found out that, well, this is obviously gonna be a spoiler if anybody hasn't seen it, but. It turns out that all of the work that Charlotte the Spider has done from Wilbur to prevent him from being turned into bacon or a ham, um, she ends up dying. And I cry <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> I hate you for spoiling that thing, and I think I've seen it before anyway. But It's, 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 it's 1979. Come on, if you haven't seen that movie, then you are missing a lot. True. Too true. Yeah. So, and the that's my two cents. Oh, that the song? you laughed at. Oh, the first song that I laughed at. Hmm. That's very or question any because... any song you laughed at. Any song I laughed at. Um, okay, so... I think the first song that I really laughed at was... I can't remember. So, I'm going to go with the most recent one. I don't know if... Probably most of you have heard uh, Lonely Island, and you probably heard the song Three on the Ground, and that's the recent one that made me laugh. The first one that made me laugh, I couldn't tell you, because I have been around for 22 years, and I have no idea. <laughs> I'd go with, for the 
for the first ever movie that made me cry, Astronaut Farmer, or the huh. a the Astronaut Farmer, in which I've in the scene where he is at the hospital, I was bawling my eyes out. I was so sad for him because he has a dream. He he's a farmer who has a dream to go into space. He screws up an attempt, and oh my gosh, it's so sad. Oh. And then, I he does survive though. Spoil alert! Spoil alert! <laughs> it's not much of a spoil. It's just it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the song that I've laughed at so much is, and this is in the explicit version of it, "Down with the Sickness." By Disturbed, third verse, where he, where the vocalist is screaming, calling this, telling this apparently stupid, abusive, effing whore of a person, whatever, to... Their mother. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's basically what he's, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about... He's talking to his mom. Like at first, he sounds so innocent, and then he gets more, more aggressive, and as he starts using profanity, so he's actually talking about like, "Why did you abuse me? I don't need you. Uh, Why did you raise me this way?" It's, 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 it's a mother that he's yelling at. Yeah, I, every time I laugh my head off at that. You should also listen to uh, Richard Cheese's version. Oh of that my song gosh! As well. Heck yes, I have. I love that. <laughs> that that is the best. Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, I'm actually planning on seeing the O4 version as soon as I finish downloading it. But anyway, let's get this thing over with. I thank you all for watching, and like he said, and. I thank you for joining us. I greatly appreciate having someone else talking that way I am that way I am not doing all of that myself. You're welcome. And I thank you for all the compliments and your opinions and for agreeing with me so much. That that's the thing I liked about Cheddarface. He agreed with me. Thanks. Maybe Matt folks will... he uh, he like, agreed with me a little less on episode 4, but he's still a, bril a brilliant person. And Review Hunter, I forget what exactly that was like. I'd have to listen to it again. But, um, before I go, I do plan on doing up, well, not new bumpers, but having better audio because of my snowball microphone. But, anyways... Thanks all for watching. I love you all. And I hope to have new Blazy Logs out soon. And I'm going shooting tomorrow. So I'm going to have some fun with that. And. Do do da dum. What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonation.tk for more articles and show notes. The flippin' awesome.engine.com slash BNP for show notes and to sponsor a future episode. Well, I guess that's about all, unless you want to add something at the very, very ending. Well, I got something to say. What? So, I was a music major in college, and I have a quote for those of you who are music nerds out there. Don't be sharp. Don't be flat. Just be natural. Eh? Sounds good. I'll take it. <laughs> that was going to uh -huh. be my graduation quote, but I, choose, I chose something else. And I'm still that's... debating whether I should have everybody lies as my graduation quote or something else. Which that's it's from the truth. House. <laughs> it's pretty much the truth. Everybody does lie. They're called white lies. And yep. they're also called lies. Unless you're a complete and honest person, and I don't think that everybody is completely honest. 
Never. Nope. All right. All right, I'm that's taking it. Taking this off stream now. Hey, wait a minute there, Bozo. Are you forgetting something? Who me? Yeah, you. Oh. Um. Blast from the past. Um. Oh yeah. Bitly slash BNP Stitcher. Um. That is where you can listen to Blaze on Nation now on Stitcher Radio, which is an alternative to iTunes for those who do not who do not use iTunes, and especially great for those who use Android like me. And there you can leave ratings and reviews and all sorts of fun stuff. So if you can go there, thank you so much and. Have a good time. Bye-bye.